Yeah, hello everyone. Good evening. My name is Pratik. Uh, I'm here to present about the Kaivano, how Kaivano can help you uh, secure your supply chain, right? So let's move on. So what's today's agenda is uh, why policy, right? Why we need a policy, first of all. First of question comes in my mind. And uh, how Kaivano helps here and what is Kaivano is all about, right? Then we'll see uh, how policy, Kaivano policies work, about the internals of Kaivano architecture, right? And then I have some demos, uh, how things work with the demo. I'll show you some things stuff, right? And then what additional features we have built in Kaivano as part of new releases, right? So I'll talk about that. And then uh, somebody in QA at, at, at the end, right? So let's move on. So about me, I'm a senior software engineer at, at Nirmata, right? I'm a Kaivano maintainer. I'm one of the founding member of OpenEBS as well. Uh, it's uh, OpenEBS is nothing but a storage solution for Kubernetes. So yeah. Uh, so first question comes, right, why policies? Uh, so if you have a Kubernetes cluster, uh, you're maintaining multiple Kubernetes cluster, you, at the end you need a policy, right? Because if you don't have a policy in your cluster, uh, things go haywire, right? Uh, you, uh, if you're not secure properly, that, the, the, there will be chances that you can uh, deploy some uh, bad images, right? So th there will be security concerns and everything can happen. So if you don't have policy, your cluster can be look like this. Right in five minutes. Uh, so, uh, so with, with the with the rise of Kubernetes platform, uh, because there is a, as you can see, there is a CNCF uh, survey that says that there is a 96% of enterprises that are going to use Kubernetes or in the face of evaluating Kubernetes and they're going to deploy containers and everything Kubernetes, right? So that's why we need a policy because we want to maintain everything and you need a policy management tool to maintain all the stuff and secure your cluster. Yeah, so with the uh, uh, Kubernetes use uses, uh, things got deployed in Kubernetes, so cost of missing of Kubernetes guardrails will increase as well. So if you have any misconfiguration in your cluster, that will be cost costly to maintain and uh, maintain the cluster as well in the pipeline. So yeah, you should, you should at least uh, use a policy. So uh, what are the policy, right? So pol policies are a developer's contract or operation contract. So you can uh, deploy a policy in a cluster and you manage those stuff using a contract, right? So, and how does Kubernetes help you with the, uh, as a Kubernetes, as a uh, DevOps or as a platform engineer, right? So uh, policy gives uh, guardrails to, you can secure a cluster and uh, produce a compliance into, into the cluster. Uh, you can automate the stuff, uh, you can basically bootstrap things using cover no, using, with a generate feature, right? Uh, you can have a policy reporting thing for all the vulnerabilities in your cluster. You can generate the reports and you can analyze later as well. And, uh, next is what policies provide, right? So. Uh, with the different team of concerns, you can have uh, DevOps, you can have uh, SecOps people, you can have a platform admins, right? You can, uh, uh, with a, and they have, they have their own uh, use cases, and using Kaveno, you can achieve those use cases, right? Uh, you, can, uh, you can secure a cluster, you can validate the resources, you can enforce the policies, right? And you can, uh, you can uh, have, a, have them as a background scan as well, so that uh, later, if there is any vulnerability has been found in a cluster, that can be, uh, generated as a policy report, and then you can analyze that as well. Yeah. So why Kaverno? I already talked about. You you want to uh, you want to write a policy as a Kubernetes way using Kubernetes API. It's easy to write, easy to understand in a whole Kubernetes API's way. So you can write a policies. Uh, it's like a custom resource in Kubernetes. You can, uh, it's easy to write, you can validate the resources, you, you can do audit or enforce, right? Audit is to generate a policy report in the background scan. Enforce, you can just enforce it uh, instantly, right? And then you can mature the resources and you can generate as well. Mature in the sense you want to patch something on your, uh, uh, whatever you're going to deploy, for example, a pod, you want to s set certain labels, you can use the mature feature of uh, Kaiweno policy, and then uh, generate, right? So you, with the generate, you can bootstrap any resources. For example, uh, you're going to create a namespace space, as I as mean, you want certain resources to be get created. For example, a network policy. So a network policy, a uh, uh, pod description budget, uh, it can be a cluster, cluster role, cluster role bindings, uh, network policy, uh, and quotas as well, right? Uh, so you don't need to, need to have a third party resources, like third party tool, like a, a Terraform or something. You can use policies to write those uh, bootstrapping things. 
uh, even you can, uh, you, uh, policies can be written on a custom resources as well, uh, and, and not just a native API, you can use any custom resource, custom resources and write a policy around that. Okay. Uh, so there is a uh, there is a two different engines currently in Kubernetes ecosystem. One is called uh, Kaivana, and the other one is Opa. Opa is uh, a general purpose general purpose rule engine. You have to uh, learn a, a different language called Rigo to write their own uh, uh, Opa policy policies. But with Kaivana, is like Kubernetes Native. It's built for Kubernetes, right? Uh, so policy can be a, right as a declarative Kubernetes resources. Resources you write a policy, and then you can instantly. Uh, you write, update the policy and the resources will be updated based on that, right? So based on the policy changes, your resources get updated as well. Uh, you can, uh, as I talked about, uh, Kaivano has validation, mutation, generation, but uh, OPA doesn't support these features. Uh, with Kaivano, image verification is one of the good uh, uh, feature with, uh, which comes with verifi uh, Kaivano, which uh, with using that image verification feature, you can achieve the supply chain security and SecOps uh, things. Right, it's a NATO uh, CNCF change. Uh, uh, Kaivano as well supports the uh, reporting mechanism as well, I, which I talked about earlier. So it's a it uses the CSI benchmarks to generate those reported reports, and you can analyze using that as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, there is a comparison. Uh, there is one of the folk called uh, Victor. Uh, he's one of the famous in the community community. He has some comparison between Kaivano and uh, uh, Gatekeeper Opa. Right, so uh, this video can be referred as well to understand more about these policies and comparison among these projects. So how, yeah, so next is how Kaivano policy works, right? So uh, this is about architecture of Kaivano. So Kaivano is uh, uh, admission controller, so Kubernetes make it very easy to write Kubernetes, uh, admi admission controllers or, or any way to extend the Kubernetes APIs. So there's one of the feature called admission web, web books. So Kaivano uses that feature to uh, to validate the resources, uh, mutate the, uh, basically all the requests comes as a mutate and validate based on the uh, API handles and uh, has been exposed, right? So, so it can be, uh, mutate after authentication authorization, resources can be mutated, they can be validated based on the uh, policy you have written, right? So uh, in case of a webhook, there are different components to achieve that. Uh, so there is an admission report, there is a background scan reports, which can be, if you're not enforcing the policies, this can be generated using these features, right? Uh, and update request. Update request is nothing but a generate, uh, which is back in background running. Uh, it's a background controller, uh, which basically look into the resources and basically uh, uh, it's looking into a pattern or a kind. Uh, for example, for example, a namespace, and based on the namespace and uh, policy rule, uh, you are uh, he's acting on that, right? Yeah, so uh, we have a policy and uh, custom. So Kaivano has two resources. One is called policies, which is specifically, specifically for namespace resources, or basically applied on a namespace. And then there is a cluster policy, which is a cluster scope resource. Yeah, so these are the different use cases based on the different teams, either SecOps, DevOps, or FinOps. So SecOps can have a part security, workload security, a granular or back control. Uh, if they want to uh, achieve multi-tenancy and those kind of stuff. Uh, they can do the workload isolation as well. I made signing and verification, which I'm going to talk about, and I will show the demo as well. And similarly, we have a Dev DevOps use cases. Uh, you want to mutate the sources. Uh, you want to uh, manage the certificates. Uh, you have a config map which get updated. You want to, uh, based on the config map, you want to restart the pod as well, those kind of policies and those kind of uses, use cases as well. And similarly, we have some use cases for the FinOps. So Kaveni is all about, it's, it's, uh, it has a very widespread use cases for each kind, each kind of team as well. Yeah, so how the Kaveno policy look like, right? So uh, you can see policy is a, is a custom resource. Then we have a, a rule. Uh, so inside a rule, you have a match and exclude resources. So basically on the match, you can based on the resource and kinds or names, or maybe example, uh, labels as well, right? You can uh, match the resources, and then based on the match, uh, similarly, you can exclude the certain resources as well. So for the matching kind, for example, you are matching a name, namespace, you can uh, in the exclude block, you, um, you can mention about the uh, excluded namespace, so that policy will not be applied on those particular namespaces as well, right? So, and uh, that each rule contains uh, match and exclude. Similarly, it, it has a rules, 
uh, to either you want to mutate the resource, or you want to generate the resource, or you want to validate, or either uh, you want to have a verify image verification feature, right? Uh, so yeah, this is one of the example of validation. Uh, so you can see the kind here is uh, cluster policy, and you can see the metadata name. So it's some more of a Kubernetes API way, right? Uh, under spec, you can see the validation failure action, uh, which is set to enforce. So basically, you want to enforce the policy to be to all the resources which is coming into the API, right? Or coming into the Kubernetes API server. So, uh, uh, after that, we have a rules, right? So it, uh, a single policy can have a number of rules. So there is the first rule, uh, which checks for the labels, right? So it's checking, so and the matching resources, uh, it's a pod. So what it does is, it's matching the resource pod and checking for all the labels. And uh, because its uh, policy is written to validate the resources, so I have a validate uh, rule. Uh, you can have a message so that it can be easily understandable for everyone. So a message I said, label app.kubernetes.io slash name is required, right? So it's looking for the pattern, uh, and it's looking, it, it will look into the metadata labels of all the resources of what kind, and it, it's, it see that, uh, that this, uh, this key has been set or not into the labels, right? If it's not, it will throw, throw the error in front of. When you do kubectl apply, it will just enforce the policy and it will block the resources. Similarly, uh, uh, you can write a validate, validation policy uh, for all the deprecated APIs as well. So in Kubernetes, there, is a, there are different uh, 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 APIs or resource APIs which are getting built uh, in each quarterly basis, and they are getting deprecated as well, right? So you can write a policy so that if you're somehow using a deprecated policy itself, deprecated deplicate API version of any resources, you can just block those resources using this API. So here, I have a set of kinds listed under the matching rule, right? And I'm validating those resources, uh, which has been deprecated uh, and removed in Kubernetes 1.25. So they, that will not allow to be created inside the, inside the Kubernetes cluster itself. Similarly, uh, a muted policy example, right? So uh, uh, I have a uh, so I, I have a muted rule. Yeah, I can see here similar similar to validate. I'm looking to create a patch, so I'm just ranging over all the, all the containers and doing an operation add, right? And uh, all it can it can patch all the containers, either a init container, either a ephemeral container or a main container as itself, and it can uh, do a kind of port. Uh, 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 patching and etc. Right. So and uh, it can support different use cases, uh, different condition logic or anchors using if then else or if don't defined then patch itself. It can be used. It uses a JSON patch and a strategic merge patch as well to uh, patch the resources. Yeah. Third is uh, generate policy. So generate policy is like. Uh, you can see generate rule as well. So uh, have an example of generate, which uh, which is kind of generating a spec uh, called uh, using a Kubernetes API called kind called network policy. So you can see it's a whole object itself, right? Apart from its metadata itself, apart from its metadata, right? So kind has uh, kind is uh, so whenever. So this policy is all about uh, looking, uh, watching a namespace. So if there is a namespace got created, it will be generating a, net, uh, a resource called network policy. Uh, I have given the name called deny all traffic, and then I have all the uh, all the spec inside the resource, right? All the network policy resources, uh, either uh, match labels, match expressions, or anything inside the resource itself. So uh, with with generate, you can have different use cases as well. You can clone the resources. You can sync the resources as well. So if you have created a resource, you want to clone to the new namespace. Whenever you create a namespace, you can clone all the resources to that particular new uh, namespace kind itself, right? Uh, and then there is a sync feature. Uh, uh, basically, uh, so you, if you have any update on the uh, source uh, resource. For example, in a default namespace or in a, in a production namespace, you have a network policy which is uh, has been updated after some time, and then that, that if synchronized is enabled, that that sync will update the other resources which has been cloned or copied from that. So that is one of the use cases as well. Yeah, let's move on. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, image verification policy. Right, so uh, we are using cosine uh, to uh, validate the resources, val validate the image verifications. Si if you have signed the uh, images, you can you can automate all the stuff. Uh, how how to verify? Right, so you can use Kaiwano to uh, verify the images, certificates, 
right? Uh, their uh, their uh, shasam, everything. You can use Kaivana itself. Uh, you can use uh, wild wildcards can be used as a, as a matching all kind of images. You don't have to specify a name. So yes, uh, you can verify the signatures, right? Uh, we'll see some demos around that to understand more. So yeah, so this policy is all about check the image. So you have seen this. Uh, there is a I'm verifying an image, right? Uh, under the image uh, verify image rule, I have an image to get verified. It doesn't have any tags, so I just put star there so that all kind of tags will be verified. And I have a key uh, which uh, has been signed using uh, a cosine, and I'm verifying that image as well. Let, let's let's have some demos. Yeah, so I have a, a single. Is it fine? Yeah. So I have a single Kubernetes cluster running single node Kubernetes cluster. Uh, right, uh, I have Kaiverno installed uh, running in a uh, Kaiverno namespace. Okay, I'm going to deploy certain resources and policies and see how it behaves on the. Uh, uh, Based on the policy route, right? So, so to automate this one, I written a uh, written a policy, uh, written a, a script basically, just to save my time with the writing. So I'll run that script and I'll talk about how I'll go with the uh, with the flow itself. Okay, let's start that script. Okay, yeah. So. Uh, I have a first uh, demo uh, to block the root user. Basically, if image has been uh, built using a root user, you want to block those kind of images, right? You want don't, you don't want to to want to create those or deploy those those type of images into the cluster itself. So, how the policy look like, right? So, uh, you can see uh, I have a spec uh, again. I'm enforcing that policy using a validation failure action field. Uh, I have written rules called only allow non-root uh, Im container images, right? I'm watching a matching kind called pods, so all pods will be uh, validated, right? And uh, I have a precondition set for the delete rules and those kind of stuff. I just want to see uh, under the validate rule, I just want to verify the images with the root user are not allowed, right? So uh, this will be looking for API lookup for all the, all the containers into which is coming as a part of pod request. Right, and it will verify the image data. It will look into the uh, image registry. It will look into that, for example, a Docker registry or any container image registry, and it will verify the image data, and it will verify the user of that image data. And it, if it's equals to uh, blank, it's if the user root user is not set, it will just allow the image right to be deployed in a cluster. Uh, let's see the some demo. Uh, for example, I have uh, so let's deploy this policy first. So I can use simply kubectl apply and uh, hyphen f policy name, right? So cluster policy uh, cl called block root has been created in the cluster. Uh, let's deploy some uh, image. For example, I'm uh, using kubectl de uh, deployment command to uh, using, a, uh, I'm using a busy box image here. I'm just doing, doing a dry run server instead of creating, I'm just validating using a Kubernetes API uh, server, right? As a dry run request. So let's see what it does. Ideally, it, it will block the image because PCBox has root user configured, right, while building the image itself. So let's see, yeah. So you can see, uh, you got the error saying that uh, failed to create deployment, admission webhook, uh, service fail denied the request because it failed that rule, right? The image has been a, user, a root user configured. So you can see that. Uh, uh, let's deploy an uh, image which has non-root user configured, right? So here I'm uh, doing a Kaiverno because Kaiverno build, uh, Kaiverno image has been built using a non-root user, right? So let's see it's get deployed into the, into the cluster or not. Yeah, so you can see it's simply uh, dry run. Uh, let's uh, just, just to prove it, uh,
yeah so uh, i think i didn't show i just removed the uh, removed the uh, uh, that policy which is blocking the resource which is blocking the resources and then i try to create the busy box container image again and it's uh, uh, allowed right because policy is not lo no longer there uh, yeah let's move on a uh, 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 next a demo uh, called block stale images. So uh, you can, uh, so uh, first one use case we have seen that we can block the images using, a, if a non -root, root user has been configured. Next use case can be, uh, I want to bl block the images which, which is very old images, right? For example, uh, I'll try to, uh, so in this policy, how it's look like. So again, we have a validation failure action. Uh, I am watching a resource called pod. And again, a validate rule will be uh, written. Again, it's looking at all the containers, right? Uh, it uh, doing a pay lookup image registry call to gather the data. And again, it's verify the, verifying the data uh, when the image has been created, right? You can see some uh, inbuilt function of, uh, of Kaivano, which is called time sense. Uh, it's looking for the greater than, op there, uh, there is an operator. Uh, greater than operator has been used here, and it's looking for the value of, uh, it should not be greater than 4380 hours, right? So it's a bit older image, image. Uh, all will be blocked and uh, get deployed in the cluster. So let's apply this policy, right? I, op op uh, policy has been applied. Let's deploy a container image called Ubuntu, uh, which is 18.10 version, is a bit older. Uh, I'll deploy, this, this will be blocked by the policy. It says uh, image built more than six months, so it has been blocked. Uh, just to test it, I'll deploy a new image of Ubuntu itself, uh, and it should get into the cluster. Yeah, it's successful dry run. Uh, let's see the next test case uh, called Meteor Tech to Digest. So uh, in, in certain cases, uh, you want to have, a, a, so you tag the images, but there is, ch ch there is a chances that that has that image has been uh, uh, tempered, right? And uh, and you want to calculate a digest for each commit, whatever you commit to the GitHub or any service, uh, any version control system, right? For example, GitHub. And if that image has been uh, released using a Sasham, you can verify those things. So in this policy, I'll see uh, what, what is doing here. Again, uh, again a validation fa failure action. It's running in the background. Right? Here I'm doing a mutate, a mutate action or mutate rule. So it again looking for all the containers, right? It's uh, trying to read the read the data using image image history lookup, right? And then it's patching the patching the uh, uh, shasham of the image as a tag itself. Okay. Uh, let's uh, run some examples. So I'm again using a Kaivano image for example, right? I'm creating a deployment using that. So. Currently, I didn't deploy that policy, so you can see that under the image, I have just, uh, there is no tag, right? You, you, you cannot see the shasham of the image or digest, right? Let's, let's deploy that policy, right? I just created that policy, uh, wait for a couple of seconds, and uh, uh, let's deploy the uh, image again, okay? You will see that uh, shasham get calculated and it append to that. So you can see the image, and it's appended the shasham of the digest of the image itself. Okay, so this kind of users can be done using Kaibana itself. Similarly, uh, now the image verification, you have verified all the stuff. Now you, now you want to verify the image using uh, uh, certificates, right? So here we are using, a, uh, here the image has been uh, signed and pushed to the GitHub using a, a SQL sign and a false for the root verification without as a keyless feature. So you don't, uh, you can verify using a certificate as well, but you, if you want to use a keyless feature of uh, a cosign and six to, you can use that as well with using a Kaiverno. So let's see what this policy does. So you have this policy, again, a uh, validation failure action. Uh, here, verify image rule has been written, right? So it image reference uh, has been uh, given as a wild card. So all kind of images which is going into the cluster has been, will be going to be verified, right? Uh, under the attester, you can see the count. I'm looking for the count one. At least one count should be matches. And it's looking for the, uh, so image, it, it verifies for the keyless feature, the subject uh, who has built this image and verified, right? Uh, and tag that image, particular image. So I'm using one of the colleague, colleagues, uh, 
build system, right, and GitHub Action, uh, how, how it's been uh, configured, and uh, put, uh, how GitHub Action build the images, sign those images, and push to the GitHub using that uh, GitHub Action itself, right? And you can see uh, I have Recur configured for the root, Fulcher root uh, configuration and verification, and then additional extension has been given, so it, just to verify the particular uh, GitHub Action or flow, right? So I have a trigger, a flow trigger has been used as a push, uh, Shah just committed out just to test some scenarios, uh, so just ignore that. You can just name, or, uh, you, can just, uh, give, you just can share the name as well, which, yeah. So you can have a workflow name as well, and then you can point to the repository as well, which where the workflow has been created or has been run, right? So uh, let's deploy this policy. Yeah, created that policy. Wait for a couple of seconds to get registered. Uh, let's have, have some. Let's create a deployment using a uh, unsigned image. So I'm using just generate uh, gen, uh, simple nginx image, which is not signed by me or, or, or by action itself. Uh, let's see uh, this get deployed or not. It should ideally should be blocked because it's not signed it, and it's not matching any. Uh, whatever the keyless entry or subject or issuer has been configured using a policy, right? So you can see it says, says fail to verify image. Uh, it says attest to entry keyless no matching signature, right? So uh, just to test this one, uh, I have uh, exported the uh, cosine experimental feature just for using the keyless uh, things. Let's deploy our image which has been, oh, okay. I'm verifying this image has been verified. So Cosine verifies the images, so I'm just doing the uh, unsigned image, right? Let's see, does it has any inf information about the verification? So it says no matching signature, right? You can use Cosine feature, uh, Cosine CLI to verify those kind of images as well, whether it's signed or not. Uh, le uh, let's have a deployment, uh, uh, which is basically a, a demo Java, tap, Java tam, Tomcat's uh, uh, application. Uh, which has been signed using GitHub, GitHub Actions and has been uh, pushed to the uh, registry, right? So this is signed, so this should be allowed to the created in this cluster. So you can see the dry run has been successfully, and you can see uh, the shasham has been calculated and everything. So it's been allowed in the cluster. Again, I can verify this particular image. Does it has all the information, right? So let's see. Yeah, you can see all the all the secret information. Uh, you can see the subject, what I configured inside the policy, right? GitHub, uh, or the workflow, or the GitHub action repo. And you can see uh, uh, the ver verify message says the cosine claims are, uh, all the co cosine claims are validated. Uh, existence of claims in transmission log has been verified, right? All the signature has been used uh, against the false roots has been verified as well, right? So yeah, this verifies successfully. Let's have a next example uh, using a multi-cluster tester. So we have seen uh, that keyless feature. Now if you have a multiple attesters, right? So how do you do that, right? So for example, uh, I have different use cases. Uh, uh, I want to deploy images on certain namespaces and should be blocked to, should be blocked if you going to apply, up, going to, uh, going to deploy that particular app into the other namespaces, right? So for, for example, uh, so this is a policy. So here I'm again doing a verify image things. I'm, uh, image reference I gave as a, uh, that particular image I want to verify, which is getting deployed to the cluster, right? I have count is two. Uh, basically I'm looking for two values to be uh, successfully pa uh, passed. Th then only I can, I will going to deploy the, in, the image into the cluster. So I have written, a. Uh, Config map, it's looking for the public keys and the secret as well. I'll, let's look into the, uh, how the config map look like, right? Yeah, so you can see I have a config map. Uh, so I have um, created a config map and the data entry, I have production app one and app two. So image has been signed using these certificates, right? So in the production, all the, uh, if the, the app is going to deploy in the production, that, that has to be verified using the certificates. And then app one, if application is going to deploy in app one, it uh, should be uh, should be validated against this certificates. And app two, it has to be verified with this particular certificate, right? Uh, so let's apply that apply this config map, right? It's already applied, so it's changed. 
let's apply this uh, uh, apply this uh, policy uh, which verifies the multi attestors things right so uh, yeah so i have applied the policy i have created the app one namespace and app two namespace as well right uh, let's uh, run the application app1 in a default namespace right so because i'm running a default namespace and app1 uh, has to be deployed in a app app1 namespace okay so let's deploy this one and see what happens so see it blocked right it says uh, okay so two rules has been has kicked in because i have two policies right in the cluster so both are getting uh, executed uh, so you can see it says uh, no matching signatures for a no a certificate found on signature for the default namespace right you can see uh, it says fail unknown key default in path so because it has been verified against app1 and app2 not for default uh, so next is i will try to deploy this app in a uh, app1 in a app2 namespace itself so let's see what it does Uh, it says, yeah, it blocked, right? Because app one is not certified to deploy in an app two namespace, right? So it blocked with the signature keys. It has to verify two two fields, entry one and entry zero, right? So you can see a production as well as uh, a namespace as well, which is app one, right? So it validated against two signatures. Now let's see if this app get deployed in app one namespace, right? So here I'm just going to deploy it again. And let's see what happens. It should, yeah, it's okay. So it got deployed, but it uh, got blocked by other uh, policy mistakenly, which was because I didn't clean that up. So yeah, so it has been uh, accepted as a resource in that particular namespace. So this way you can have a, a, multi, a multiple att attester and you can verify against those certificates to be deployed in different namespaces. And you can block if that, sing that same app has been going to deploy by the, into the other namespace. Yeah, so that's the use case. Yeah, that's what it is uh, for demo, yeah. Let's move on. Oh, slides. Yeah, so uh, apart from these features, uh, Kaivano has some other features as well. Uh, Built-in custom variables, you can have, what I have seen in uh, some of the demo as well, you can have inbuilt functions to create some of the things to uh, do a logical operations and validate the stuff, right? Uh, you have James path uh, to basically uh, go to the, as a tra traverse over the resources and get some inf important information as well. You can do API lookups. Uh, for example, you can do API lookups for any certain type, uh, Kubernetes inbuilt resources, right? And based on those resources, you can act on that, right? Uh, you can register OCI registries, as well, for example, Docker or any other GitHub registry, for example, or AWS as well, to validate uh, or image verification features itself. Uh, Kevin also provides some metrics and spans to, uh, do, uh, to uh, basically analyze the stuff. Right? We have a policy report feature, which a policy reporter as a third party resource, which can be deployed in cluster to visualize the reports and other data to analyze further. And we have a policy exception feature as well, which uh, where you can, uh, you can write a policy exception as a policy, right? And then you can uh, have those uh, policy, uh, you can have a main policy, which can be a uh, provide exception to, to get stored, get deployed in other resources or policy itself, right? So yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so what is summary, right? What, what we have seen till now. So, so the, uh, we have seen the policy is a must for Kubernetes. If you don't have policy, you can be uh, difficult to manage your cluster down the line, right? And uh, Scoveno is a CNCF policy engine built for Kubernetes. Uh, you don't have to learn any other specific language. You can just uh, use a Kubernetes API where you can write a declarative policies and use it. Uh, it's easy to easy to write, easy to get started, and easy to understand as well. 
Yeah, so uh, uh, Kaiveno has a community as well. Uh, it's, uh, there is a uh, website and for the docs and the sample policy. There has so many sample policies has been written by the community itself. You can look into that, those policies to understand more how, how we can write those policies, how we can run those policies with examples as well. So you can visit kaiveno.io as a, for the website. And we have a Slack channel as well in the Kubernetes Slack. You can reach out to the, uh, our developer or committee member will be there to help you if you have any queries around that. And then we have monthly and, uh, and a weekly contributors meeting as well, where you can join and ask your queries and uh, basically, basically you can get some help to develop some, uh, use, some issues or you can, you can start working on certain issues to contribute to the Gaveno project as well. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, I'm open for Q&A. Any questions if you have? Yeah. No, we don't have time for questions, but okay. yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.